Bom dia a todas e todos. Uh, we have to move to switch to English. I will indeed uh, invite Val Valber to introduce our speaker today. Milan, thanks a lot for accepting the invitation. Yeah, thank you. Valber, please. Good, yeah, good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to welcome Milan Radovic from Paul Sharon Institute, PSI, Switzerland, for our colloquium today. Milan got his degree in applied physics from University of Belgrade, Serbia, and his PhD from University of Naples, Federico II, in 2005. Since 2013, he's a staff scientist at Swiss Light Source at PSI, and he's very well known actually for working on photoemission of transition metal oxides and other strongly correlated systems. Uh, he also uh, the manager and develops different types of facilities at PSI, including the combination of MBE, the molecular beam epitaxy, PLD, and angle resolved photoemission. So thank you very much, Milan, for accepting the invitation. And please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Valber, for a nice introduction. Yeah, OK. We know each other, let's say, some years ago when we met in the BNL. And it was yeah. really great, great occasion to, well, to know you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol, uh, for, for also yeah, managing yeah, all of these things. And thank you all for, for inviting me to give the colloquia on, on this very nice uh, environment, which is, of course, very far, but still, I, I feel that we are somehow together. So today, I will, I will speak uh, uh, about uh, low dimensional electronic systems, which emerge in transition metal oxides. And um, so you will see now uh, how this can be created, manipulated with, and also part of the promising application uh, roads, which those materials or those systems can be used for the quantum technology in future, I hope near future. So I would like to first to show you just this photo about uh, uh, capabilities which exist at the PSI. Paul Sheridan Institute is an institute which was formed uh, in, in 90s merging two institutes. We call this West and East. So this would be uh, West, sorry, East, and this would be West. And now this is only one institute. So if you are, if you are looking what we have there, I call that unique tool set at one place. The reason is because we have four large experimental facilities. So on the West side, there is uh, research using neutrons research using photons and muons as well. And on the east side, we have very large facility, long at least, one kilometer long, uh, using fast photons, actually free electron laser facility. So this also facility is, even is new, is also already operating since 2018. Uh, of course, in the same, this environment, we have a lot of research labs doing the bio from the bio stuff, chemi chemical research, material research, etc., which are connected strongly or weakly to those facilities. So it's not necessary that all researchers, what, you, what, what, are, what are now at the PSI, about 2,000 facilities. Actually, it's maybe half. OK, so. Little bit about SLS. SLS, which is now, you know, in in uh, in, in let's say upgrade phase or let's say planning phase to go toward to co coherent light source, is one of the again unique tool set. The reason is it's not big. It's one of the smallest synchrotron, 2.4 giga electron volts. So it also is not big by the size. But what is the unique actually stability? So stability of the of the machine. Uh, uh, secures more than 90% of the time to be on the top regime. So there is very rarely something as what we call beam dump. So this is picture of the, of the, of the inside in, in the middle. So some of the, our equipment and the team which you could see there uh, at, at the RPS end station and on other end stations. So now going 
somehow to the to the uh, um, topic of the of the my talk. So it's saying why transition metal oxides are my topic of interest, and uh, why I'm calling that creating novel phase and tuning electronic states of the artificial uh, hybrid materials based on the uh, transition metal oxides. The reason is because by the definition, transition metal oxides are artificial materials. So you are combining large set of the metals with oxygen and you are able to get very complicated and very complex materials with extraordinary electronic and magnetic properties. Those properties are, for example, colossal magnetic resistance, then uh, high TC, so superconductivity with very high TC, so about 100 Kelvin already, metal insulator transitions, then some topological states, and so on and so on. So if you are going a little bit more, uh, so what we can say, why transition metal oxides are interesting, fascinating, and why they open so large field? Because of the, let's say, three main reasons. The first is that they have partially filled this shell. When you have that, that immediately open electron-electron interaction. So electrons start to see each other, orbitals start to play a role, and spin as well. So you have something which is called spin-orbit interaction and start to be very strong in such kind of the materials. At the same time, you have multiple valence states, which means you have many electrons configurations open for just one simple configuration, which means, I say, com combining, let's say, for example, uh, titan titanium and oxygen, immediately you can have their uh, 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 much, more, uh, much more different configuration than, than, than uh, you can, for example, four plus and three plus in the, in the titanium states. And very important is easy exchange charge with oxygen. So this, again, open one more room, which says there is oxygen now start to be some kind of the, of the important uh, sink for the electrons or can donate electrons. And this is very, very, very important for cooperates and high TC, for example. So you have the kind of the ligand which start to play very much role in this system. But then in, on the top of those, we have something which are related to the structure. So many structures are possible when you have transition metal oxide. You can have a rock salt structure, so that means binary oxides. You can have perovskite structure as cubic, orthorhombic, tetragonal, and so on. So it depends now how you are combining rare earths with the, with the, with the transition metal oxides. You, you can have a layered structure, so this is a layered uh, perovskite. Then you can have more complex Roots and Popper series when you have some kind of the of the of the layered and multi-layered structure, for example, lanthanum three, nickel O seven, lanthanum strontium three, uh, iron O ten. So you have much more now interplay between transition metal oxide and oxygen, or you can have double perovskite and so on. So all of this, when you put together, it's the is the actually interplay and the playground that you are using the lattice, charge, orbital, and spin to create the new physics, to create new properties. OK, so how I'm thinking, let's say, my way is saying, OK, if I have all of this possible, I will choose at least four, four knobs to tune the properties. One is distortion. So if I have transition metal oxide, so that, that, that in my in my case, which means that this octahedron is blocked, I can use distortion to, to tune at least energy splitting between, between levels, between bands, uh, or I can use doping using the another atoms, putting in the lattice, or oxygen taking out. So as I said before, there is kind of exchange, easy exchange of the electrons once you are having vacancies, which immediately will change the feeling of the bands. I can do a little bit more subtitle changing, which means octahedral rotation, which can immediately change the binding angles. Then hopping probability will change, which means how electrons hope from the one transition metal to the neighbor one. 
will change effective mass, will change effect, uh, bandwidth of the, of the band structure and so on. Or I can go one more step further, combine a couple of the, of the different uh, transition metal oxides in the one artificial system, and I can get then additional doping via charge transfer. I can induce order as magnetism in super, or superconductivity from one system to another. So how to turn those knobs? There are several, several ways. For example, one is temperature. So you just change the temperature, there is phase transition. This phase transition will surely then affect all of these properties via changing of distortion or changing of tailor rotation or so on. I can change the surface structure. So that is a little bit more kind of aggressive approach. I can change uh, 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 concentration of the defects. All of the defects will be, will be then induced in the system trying then to the system will respond to them, uh, trying to screen them or to change the lattice via strain, then interface effect, proximity effect, and so on. I will today talk mostly how the lattice can be, uh, can be changed uh, via surface structures, which, which is mostly, I would say, interface surface effect. So now a little bit more to the focus. How now we can use one of these approach very efficiently. So if I put those materials, let's say two transition metal oxides together, transition metal oxide A or transition metal oxide B, often at the interface, new physics emerge. So effects as orbital reconstruction, charge transfer, spin polarized carrier injection, proximity effect. All of that, which I now list here, for example, creation of the low dimensional electronic system and set, so, so on, topological protective state can emerge at the interface. How we can use them is the just given by the, by the way what you see. So you see two materials in the contact, it is immediately device. So those two materials in the contact, they are very stable because they protect each other. So from the environment, et cetera. So all of these physics, all of these effects you can use for the future technology. When that starts, kind of this, of this uh, uh, big field uh, using the uh, uh, low dimensional electronic system on the, mostly on the titanate is 2002. So 2002 came one paper very famous, at least for me, uh, which is uh, uh, artificial change modulation atomic scale perovskite titanium superlattice. It was reported for the first time that there is high conductivity in this system. So after that, they have uh, plenty of the paper uh, saying how you can tune this conductivity, how you can go even in the superconductivity about the magnetism which is there and so on and so on. But from 2002 to 2012, it was not big movement in understanding of this artificial low dimensional electronic system in transition metal oxide, particularly in the titanates. Only after people started to look a little bit more simpler can start to understand and some knowledge emerge. So a little bit here just about how we can use low dimensional electronic system perspectives for the, for the future. As I said before, if you are having them embed in one layer or two layers protected by another layers, this 2D electron gas is the new system, very, very powerful for the, for the, for the spin orbital interaction, orbitronics, electron, spin, spin uh, tronics, Topological states can easily um, emerge there, strongly protected by the, by the topology and so on. So uh, that is, was the reason, I mean, I would say that was the reason that in Europe you have the very, uh, uh, let's say official roadmap toward to using low dimensional electronic system for the novel technology. Here are some, some papers about, about those systems and some perspectives. So now I go one more uh, step uh, toward to, to main focus is saying what 
are actually, or this is how I'm seeing this, uh, how we can understand this system. I started from the first block. So building block of the titanase is titanium O6 octane. And I wanted first to tell you and that you can go with me to do just this very simple Lego uh, block. So we have here octahedron. This is perovskite structure, basically. But once I put this in the, in, the, in the system, which I have another metals, for example, alkali earth metal, I can build whatever I want. So those blocks are there and alkali metals or another type of the metals are used just to support this structure. So in order that we can understand what is going on when I start to combine, I need to understand exactly how this block is, is built, what properties this block has, and how then manipulate electronic properties, maybe superconducting and magnetic properties of these. So let's now see what does it mean, this block, on the electronic po point of view. So on the left, on the left part of, the, of the my slides, you will see this block, and once you put together titanium, in this case, titanium in oxygen, you see that there are creation of the electronic states, which are basically on the EG, T2G, famous E2G, in the cubic structure, and oxygens are well down Fermi level. So you have very close to the Fermi level, which is, uh, let's say, unoccupied state in this case, uh, one, uh, 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 only only, only uh, orbitals of the titanium while oxygen are deeply below the Fermi level. So on the right side of, the, of the, my, my presentation, you see what does it mean now when I start to uh, force uh, uh, distortion of that system. So if I have octahedral symmetry, hmm, you could see that in the octahedral symmetry, I have the lowest titanium band, which is on interest because it will be very close to the Fermi level. They are degenerated. All of them are at the same energy. When I start to distort the lattice, changing actually this octahedron from the, from the octahedral symmetry, which means cubic-like symmetry, to the something which is tetragonal symmetry, I immediately force system to split that the lower band is xy. If I go to another direction, I could get to the to, uh, rhombic symmetry that yz band is the lowest. Just now, have this in, in, in your, in your you know, mind that just one block, which I'm having here, I can tune via the orbital distortion or changing the symmetry, let's say lowering the symmetry from the cubic one or federal one to the rhombic, the tetragonal and so on, I change drastically electronic structure of this system. So now let's see how it works. So that means if I will use from those knobs, now two, distortion of the octahedron and octahedral rotation, I will surely change energy splitting between bands in the D states and hoping probability, which means effective mass of the electron as band, band width as well. So I create here, as you see, one, one empty diagram saying then band bottom is on the y axis and orbital splitting in the x, uh, x axis. And I would like to draw here some points to understand phase diagram of the titanates. And once I understand phase diagram of the titanates, we can use them and manipulate further. Let's see. Can we do that? For doing something great, you need great people, right? So uh, for such a large work, which we started to work in, let's say 2010, uh, uh, many people have been involved and mostly I would now uh, emphasize on two key person for this work. One is uh, Eduardo Bonini Godes, is the, from Brazil and now is, he is three years working with me. The other is Stefan Nuf, he was PhD student, now he is not anymore at the PSI, but still his work uh, is, is a very strong base for our future work. And just I wanted to say, now I hope that another uh, 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 person which came from Brazil, as, as Eduardo came already, is Lyudmila. She, is working, she works in the magnetic, magnetic, uh, group for magnetism and so on. And I hope that we will 
co uh, collaborate and then she will join and I will join her projects. So we have very important international collaboration and support for such kind of the project. And especially for this work is also, uh, uh, let's say, Professor uh, Hugo de Brito from your university. Uh, his in input was, I would say, crucial to put everything under one roof of this, of this work. You will see actually what I, what I meant now. Oh, and then uh, uh, I want to just once more go back. So as I said before, how uh, are important good people. And now I also see how actually, pe why people say that world is small, because you, you see somehow we are connected, but I would reverse this. World is not small, people are big. And this is why we have Ludmila, Eduardo, and, and Cynthia from Brazil here. And, and probably in the future, someone from Switzerland will come to work in Brazil, I hope. And, uh, and uh, with uh, good people, we need also to have good equipment. Uh, we have our particular strength at the, at the, at the SLS, at, let's say at my institute and, and my department. We have a combination, a very powerful technique, for example, UV ARPES, unresolved photo emission, then uh, photo emission and higher energy, then we have resonant inelastic SK scattering and so on and so on. And then we are able to create materials, as you could see here, uh, in this case, uh, neodymium nickel O3. We create the system and we can move uh, our experimental needs uh, over the, the synchrotron and then to explore samples on the different beam lines. In the future, this will be, well, let's say, near future already now, uh, we would like to have even stronger combination that we can have the PLD, the STM, uh, uh, MB system that we can create more complicated and more complex system and then to study them in situ and in very short time. So main techniques used for such research, which I'm now presenting, is the unresolved photo emission. So let's say, few words about, about um, photo emission. Electron ins insolvents are bound to the lattice. And, uh, and this is one key parameter for, for uh, uh, electronic properties. So this is binding energy. But electrons also move in the crystal with velocity, which immediately form another parameter, which is momentum. So this momentum is given uh, as well by the lattice parameters or lattice direction or lattice structure or lattice environment. So in order that I can understand electronic structure, I need to know those two parameters. So that means momentum and the binding energy. In order to, to see it, I'm using the photon. So photon is ejecting electrons from the system. And then this this binding energy is basically given by the kinetic energy or ejected electrons, war function as well, and the energy which I'm giving in order to extract, it, extract this from the, from the crystal. Of course, then I need momentum. Momentum I easily can see if I know emission angle. So uh, charging the light energy out of the plane momentum, I'm able then to have very simple, simple equations from those two, uh, let's say, uh, directions of the momentum and be able to extract band structure. So how it really works, if I have band structure, as for example, the balance band is dispersing like that, conduction band is dispersing like that. If I have the good tool, I will not go in details, good tool, which means I'm, I'm able to analyze emitted electrons well in the angle and well in the energy, I will get something which is called band structure. You could see now this is, this is, you know, kind of the conduction band is crossing the Fermi level. This is valence band dispersing. So it's very, it's very similar what I, what I show here. That was in the case of the strontium iridium O3. And then when you have the uh, many slices of that cuts, which we called here gamma X cuts, I can construct something which is called Fermi surface. So what, what is that? So what you are seeing here is the microscope of the, of the case space, or let's say view in reciprocal space. 
So microscope of reciprocal, ARPES is microscope of, of reciprocal space. How it works at the synchrotron? At the synchrotron, we have electrons which are moving in, inside of the ring. Those are undulators, so this is kind of the magnetic uh, uh, slalom uh, paths. And when electrons go to those, which we call undulators, X-ray is created. There are some optical paths to reshape the beam. And this is the sample here. And then I'm ejecting electrons. So then this is hemispheric analysis. It's just filtering those electrons in the angle and, uh, and, uh, and uh, energy. So I'm, I'm now seeing that kind of, of the picture. And this is called the band, which has dispersion. That is the Fermi level. And this was the case of, sorry, of the cooperates. So I'm then seeing one slide, combining many of them, I will be able to uh, reconstruct full K space or let's say reciprocal space. So now go, when I, when I establish now tools, let's see now what is good to, to work with. So if I have now this uh, titanate, this the octahedron in the cubic structure, I just put strontium inside and I have something which is very famous called strontium titanium O3, is the cubic down to 105 Kelvin and slightly tetragonal if you cool down. So electronic structure is pretty simple uh, uh, and is given by, by uh, titanium uh, and, and oxygen bands. So those are titanium bands which are in the conduction band and oxygen band which are in the in the valence band and calculation shows and predicted that this is insulator with the wide band gap about 3.2 electron volts. Okay, so everybody un under, uh, agree with that and uh, when you are really measuring it, it's the transparent and insulator. So let's say that we can dope it and you can dope strontium titanate putting the oxygen vacancies or some kind of the dopant, metallic dopants inside. And uh, 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 if I now construct Fermi surfaces of, of this, of this uh, system, so it will look as, as here. So you have three uh, octo octagonal cigars like Fermi surfaces. So if I do cut in the one direction, which I'm doing now here, you will get something which are like that. This is we call Fermi surface in plane. So you have now kind of the three uh, say two uh, uh, ellipse, ellipses and one circle. And I will do one more cut in the direction to see, uh, to see energy. So this will be like that. So I, I, have, I have something, I have something which is, which is uh, um, um, uh, the degeneracy of the three, three band. Okay, very good. So this is how we should understand electronically that system by the theory point of view. But when we measure it, so we measure now STO, we got completely different picture. So we could see, so this is a little bit kind of, you know, maybe complicated for non-expert, but I will try to, to explain. So here is the X axis is the momentum direction in plane. And this is Z the direction, which means momentum direction out of the plane. So for the, just like that layer. So for the system, what I said, which, which will be cubic-like and bulk-like, slightly doped, I should see that kind of the Fermi surfaces. But what we measure is like that. So it's not at all the same what was predicted by the theory. It's rather this kind of things, that we have uh, kind of the cylinders, which is extending the out of the plane direction, and kind of the coins, which are uh, orthogonally, orthogonally positioned at the gamma point. So if I do now again the data, so Fermi surface looks like that. I have the kind of the circular Fermi surfaces, ellipsoidal Fermi surfaces. If I do the cut, those are dispersion. I have very deep band, as, as you could see very nicely here with different photon energy, another sub band and, and another band here. We call those bands which highly dispersive, we call them uh, um, um, uh, light bands, which this is low dispersive, we call these heavy bands. And this is belongs to the X, X, Y orbitals, while these heavy bands is belongs to the X, Z, Y, Z orbital. Okay, so how we understand that now? So it's the clear that system went 
from the three-dimensional to the two-dimensional. So that means surface of the STO tends to electronically reconstruct toward to do 2D electronic system. That immediately tell us that this is new kind of the physics possible to use if you are able to interface this titanium, let's say STO with another, so this is propensity of the 2D electronic gas or 2D electronic system already at the STO surface. Good. So when we understand that, immediately you should see, okay, what does it mean this subband here? So this is another band. We measure this using the spin resolve, uh, Arcus measurement. So you could see this is now two Fermi surfaces, and we want to look if there is some kind of the spin structure in, in, in this in this electronic electronic states. We measure two cuts as you could see, and we could see this. We call this C, uh, spin asymmetry. From this spin asymmetry, we conclude that those two bands are basically forming two differently spin oriented Fermi surfaces. So those system now shows that this is spin, full spin polarized system. It's still under debate what actually caused this spin structure. It could be actually uh, 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 some kind of the, you know, point magnetism uh, in, the, in the system caused by the oxygen vacancies, but this can be still debated. However, this is the result. So we published that in the 2014, uh, uh, finding this spin structured STO. Okay, so now going further. So now when we understood two, deep, two K properties of the STO surface, so one property is two dimensional electronic states and the other is spin structured electronic states. Let's see how we can manipulate with that. So the first way was, okay, it's very difficult to get always the surface very flat, but maybe you know, if we do something which we call miscut, so when you have the kind of the declination of the surface and you can commercially buy surfaces with five cut, five degrees of the miscut, which will make actually step size of the 44 angstroms or 10, it will create 22 angstroms. Let's see now what ARPES could, could give us. So measuring the electronic states of that and compared with the flat surface, you see immediately that system is responding to the vicinality actually very, very strongly. And those are parameters. So if flat STO surface has effective mass, those are effective mass actually very similar, uh, 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 bottom of the, of the band for the flat surface is 235 millitrons, which means band width is the 235. Once you are increasing vicinality, you drastically decrease the band feeling or let's say band width. Okay. So this tell us that surfaces, different surfaces can actually change the doping very strongly. Good, but let's go now next step. How we see, right? So we see that those two effects happen, right? Band splitting by sure, or even a kind of the conduction band is actually now smaller, uh, less, less, uh, less uh, uh, populated. However, if I just look those picture, which is clear, right? So I, I go from, from, from this splitting to that splitting, immediately I'm saying that I'm seeing this. So if you remember my first slide, which one of the first slides, which I started from the symmetry, I say, okay, here is actually changing the symmetry. In which way? That if I have here tetragonal symmetry, the tetragonal symmetry will give me x, y band, the lowest one. And now the, the, my, uh, the, my x, y band starts to go, go shift down. I say now that we are going from the tetragonal more to the orthorhombic symmetry. So it means that I, from the squashed octahedron, go to the more even, or let's say more symmetric one. Okay. So what this happened? Why, why this uh, happened, uh, this uh, uh, octahedral distortion change? Okay, it must be due to surface relaxation as well. Then, since 
I know very well uh, uh, Valber from the another project which we work together. I asked him, okay, Valber, what do you think? How you could understand that and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, can you help us with that? And Valber said, okay, let's calculate. And we started to calculate very extensively, actually he with his team started to calculate very extensively many differently re relaxed uh, uh, STO slabs, so that means a couple of the layers. And what we found? Uh, we found that when you have the, something which we called relaxed uh, uh, um, STO, which means STO which is just truncated and exposed to the vacuum, you are getting by the calculation uh, uh, that splitting, which is something about let's say 180. And in our case, experiment is here. So there start to be very well uh, actually matching with the experiment and between theories. So this is the splitting by the, by the theory. So now if you change the structural distortion more toward to cubic one, sorry, more toward to cubic one, that means to uh, uh, move the system to be more symmetric and, uh, and to increasing the symmetry. So result is that splitting goes down until collapse to the zero, where should be actually in the, in the bulk like it should collapse to the zero. And if you are looking our calculated with flat surface with the temperature, because this is the temperature energy in the temperature, and including also miscut, we start to overlap our experiment with the theory very much. So from the, from the contribution and help uh, with, from the Valber, we easily understand that how you are actually tuning the system is the just changing the symmetry, or in this case, more particular, I say, structural distortion. Good. So that is on the STO. But then there is one system which has basically much bigger uh, structural distortion. And this is one system which doesn't have strontium inside. And this is just simple TO2. Tetragonal TO2, which you could see immediately because it's tetragonal, the splitting is the very large, by the theory is one electron volt. So here is the degeneracy at the gamma point. While here at the gamma point, you have very strong splitting. So in that case, what you could see, right, this is in case of the, of the cubic, and this is case of the tetragonal. Okay, let's now go to the simpler system. Without any strontium, we have just TO2 octahedron packed in the Anatase crystal structure. This is the lead showing four by one reconstruction, very good surface. And this is the ARPES, which just represent the same picture as the lead. So you see also one, two, three, four periodicity, same as the lead, four by one. We just look at the electronic structure, also to the electronic state with two sub bands and one and two. Uh, Fermi surfaces are also two, very similar, but splitting is larger. You could see splitting is now going to above 200 mill electron volts. Well, so that actually tell us what we uh, before studied in the STO in TO2 is presenting as well. So falls in the same, same picture and the same explanation. Okay, but can we more tune? Can we get more doping there? Usually, you know, when you are, when you are doing the surface science, how people are, are doing doping is just, you know, putting some absorbance. And the best of, of those are using actually alkali atoms because it's easy to, to evaporate them. And we use also uh, potassium uh, atoms to put on the, on, the, on the surface and you could see immediately what happened. So the band which before was, was going deeply down, we can even more populate increasing the KF, the sub band also start to populate more. So we, it, by, the, by the absorbance, we can move this uh, bend more down. So we can dope the system. So if we can dope system by the, by the absorbance, that means you, if you are able then to dope via, via elect, electric field as, the, as, the, as, the, as the, the putting the voltage there, that means you will be able to tune up and down the system. Good. So there are also another ways how we do this. This is a little bit busy slide, but I will try to explain that. 
So when we grow the films, we grow also STO films on the different type of the substrate. So on the barium titanate, you immediately see that this splitting is the different now, that these heavy bands, which we call here, is larger. When we have the same thickness of the five unicell STO on the STO, we don't have any more these heavy bands. There is only this light dispersive band down. Okay, and some parameters are, are here. The bond bottom is now 150, band splitting is 70 milli electron volts. In this case, it's 70 milli electron volts, and band splitting must be over 50. We also did one more step. We said, let's, let's again work on this, on this distortion. We use the calcium titanate O3 film. As you see, you, we just change in the strontium, we put the calcium. You just do substitution. And then what happened? We got just two D states, purely two D states. We do cut here. You see just one Fermi surface, one, just one. And then do, when you do cut here, you see very nice and very light and, and dispersive band. So we have here larger tetragonal distortions, similar to the STO, but now we don't have that kind of the sub bands anymore. And because of the, of the striker binding angles, the hoping here is, is, is larger. So you get something which is more conductive. I promise you at the beginning that, that uh, the, the uh, phase diagram in the electronic point of your electronic structure, which y-axis is band bottom and uh, x-axis is orbital, I will somehow feel with the parameters. You could see. So if STO is my starting point or TO2 is my starting point, I'm able to move band bottom you see, in the very large amount from 50 to the 400 or orbital splitting in the large amount as well from 50 to over 500. So this is enormous big effect for 2D electron gas because all of those, what I said now, will open the new path, how to use this system because once you have the sub bands or one band, two subbands which are polarized or only one, you will be able then to form the platform for spintronics, spin uh, which is very powerful or orbitronics, which is very powerful. So how we did that, right? We did this with the engineering, STO with the different personality. We did this, we are changing uh, 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 how I call this here, substitution from the zero here. Here I don't have anything, just TO2 film and I add strontium in the system, or I change the strontium with the calcium, and I'm, I'm, I'm able then to move the system in very large amount with those two parameters. So here are some, some papers which are related to this work, and I'm very proud of the team which have been working for, let's say now, something about almost 10 years together with me on this project. And I would say that it was very successful and very much helped to Eduardo, in last four years working with me and, and Stefan Mouffe in some years before and Nick, Nick Plum, which was even, even before. So with this, I would thank you for your attention and be ready for, for some questions. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Milan. Very nice talk. I will invite people to unmute the microphone so that we can thank Milan. Thank you. Thank and you. this section is now open for questions. So please uh, raise your hands in the Zoom button. So if you have questions. Oh, uh, I can find yes, it. Yes, okay, I, I, have, I could see I, you. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a question. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Milan, for the, the very good and very enlightening uh, talk. So I, I have a question about the, the topological uh, TMOs. Uh, I've been working with uh, topological uh, materials that's based on uh, bismuth. So in bismuth, we have the, uh, the topological properties came from the, the, inversion, the band inversion that's due to the strong spin orbit coupling, right? Yes. So uh, I have a question about this TMO. So what exactly uh, replaced the, the strong uh, uh, the, the strong uh, uh, orbital coupling, uh, sorry, this uh, the spin orbit, the strong spin orbit coupling. Uh, is it the, the, the symmetry of the orbitals? Uh, what is that yeah. uh, caused the, the topology in this uh, material? Yeah, yeah. 
So let, let's, let's, of course, I didn't really uh, uh, want to talk much about this, right? I just, I just go one here example. Okay, let's see that. So just because I like it here. So here we have a case of the strontium iridium O3. So iridium is very heavy. And because of that, spin orbit coupling might be strong. And plus, the symmetry on that system is uh, uh, actually uh, broken. So I, 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 maybe that might be catch your eye. So that band here is the, is the possible topolo topological origin. Because you, you might see that's kind of the crossing here. And, uh, and uh, this is, uh, you know, we observe this in the, this is not yet uh, published uh, paper. Uh, is the, so what, what is important here that uh, strontium iridium or 3 is not yet measured because single crystal doesn't exist. So in thin film forms, you can stabilize. So we have been able to, to stabilize it and we, we got kind of the topologically protected states, say it's there through the inversion symmetry and plus because of the spin orbit coupling, which is very strong because of iridium. But this ex excellent, actually, excellent, actually, uh, question. You, you are working with bismuth because bismuth is also very easy to, to, uh, to be, kind of, you know, base and platform for, for. Yes, that's very interesting. Thank you. I, I have another question. Yeah, please, yeah. <laughs> if I'm allowed. <laughs> so it's about the spin arpes. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like uh, some information of uh, actually about the beam line. So, so the range oh, yeah. of photo energies and uh, uh, the, your spin arpes, can you get information about the, the uh, spin that's perpendicular to the surface? Uh, yes, which yeah. you... good question, yes. Uh, I don't have this slide here, but it doesn't matter. I will, I will try to, uh, okay. Uh, yes, so we have, uh, there are two end stations at the, at, the CIS, at the CIS beam line, the spectroscopy interface and surfaces beam line. So we have one which we call ultra, it's going to the 3.5 Kelvin, and is for the high resolution. Second end station is we call this coffee end station, and there is the mode detector. So the mode detector, there are four, and we are able because of, of, the, of the scattering and the, over the uh, gold foil and the position of this four detector to actually reconstruct in plane and out plane as well. So because we are able then to see in the space, is it, is it electron spin polarized in plane or out of the plane. And this is kind of the classical MOT detector. And uh, so uh, it's uh, machine is, uh, is uh, let's say, uh, one of the first and probably is unique uh, in, in the world. It is very comp it's very, indeed is very complicated. Eduardo is actually running, yeah. running this machine mostly. And uh, uh, we are also moving now to the more kind of the commercial like. It will be also mode based. It will be custom made. It will be done by us and some companies together. And will be, but will be less complicated as now because this is 15 years old machine and detection. Uh, uh, is this uh, is, uh, the one that you have? Is homemade uh, detector? Yes. This is a homemade detector. Okay. It's homemade detector. Correct. Yeah. Actually, is done by the by the Vladimir Petrov. Uh, so he is really leading expert in that from St. Petersburg. And uh, uh, I, I uh, recommend to use him because uh, uh, he will go to the pension. He's actually in the pension and I'm kind of you know, worried that knowledge which he has will just disappear. And at least experience will not be used. Thank you. I, I know uh, Eduardo very much, so I may talk to him. He's a very nice, uh, very yes, nice guy. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Thank yeah, I, I recommend very, yes, exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much. for. Thank you, Rolande. Uh, Julio, please. Thank you, Carol. Milan, thank you very much. It was a wonderful talk. Very, really, thank you very much. So I, I have a, a couple of questions, if I may, because I, uh, some... Uh, using this discussion about the MOT detection that you just had with Wendell, I remember I used a, a XPS with a MOT detector at the SRF when I was there with Nick Brooks. 
and it was really taking much longer. That time it was an XPS with time of flight to make it quicker. But even that that case, it was quite. Uh, uh, it was taking very much longer. So I had two questions related to that. The first is, how much longer is a spin detected ARPS compared with a normal ARPS? And if uh, the second question related to this is, if you play with the polarization of the light using the spin detection. Yeah, very, very good question, Julia. So let's, it's true. Uh, uh, efficiency of the, of, the, of the spin resolved uh, ARPS, or let's say MOT, detection system is very low yeah. and and this there are two drawbacks because of that first is you need then to use large opening you need to increase the flux you need to use large opening of the slit so the beam is largely uh, 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 shining over the sample so any inhomogeneities will actually spoil the measurements you will not, so you need to have very well uh, and very very actual quality of the of the crystal. So for the STO and the films which we have, that's actually can be achieved. For the other system, maybe it's really difficult. The second thing is once that means you have the large flux and and long time for acquisition, so the beam damage can occur. Yeah. And uh, and that's the uh, uh, kind of the issue whenever you are doing with that kind of the spin detector because measurements for acquiring, for example, this spec that you see here is four to six hours. I see. So that means, uh, and, and, then, and then this is not enough statistics and you need once more, once more. So to obtain that kind of the data, which I just show here on the one sample would be maybe three to four days. Mm -hmm. and, and sample needs to survive. Yeah. If it doesn't survive, then you need to next one, but maybe next one is not the same anymore, etc. So for STO and this system, which I showed, show something very particular and that actually they like light. Uh, so you are starting to shine the light there and system be, be started to be better and better. So you are getting I saw sharper, that the and sharp, also, yeah. <laughs> sharper and sharper bands. Uh, yeah. So, so it, it really likes to get, because uh, 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 it's, the, it's the kind of the equilibrium. So whatever I show you here, it's the, is the kind of the light influence. So there is always light because we are using right probe, which also modify this system in some extent. Yeah, uh, indeed, uh, if, I, uh, if, if I remember correctly, in the case of some titanates, the beam catalyzes a reaction that breaks the carbon that normally sticks to the surface, then it gets, it gets out. Exactly. So this is, it's a, a good situation. Normally you, you just get carbon adsorbed, but in th that case, it's a catalytic reaction that breaks the mon carbon monoxide and it uh, evaporates. That's really, it, it, it's very it's fortunate. Yes. fortunate. It's fortunate, it's fortunate. Fortunate case, yes, yeah. yes, Julia, right. Yeah, and, and then I was asking about the, the polarization, if, he, it's, if it's uh -huh. useful to play with the polarization of the light for the spin detection. Yes, yes, it is, it is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, to, to, to get kind of uh, uh, the croissant like, uh, like, like measurement, mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, this is also a way to get the, uh, uh, how to say, let's put later, right? So, um, people are using the, uh, the, that kind of the things uh, which are more simpler, right? You are using this uh, circular plus, circular minus in order to just see this uh, spin character, etc. Uh, the, the, point, the point of that is uh, uh, because final state effect is not defined. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you need to be at right energy to get that. If you, yeah. if you are not, it, it might, it, you might miss or, or so on. Uh, while, while spin is direct measurement, you know, you are really you know, taking the electron and then this electron comes to the hemispheric analyzer. So this is already defined by the, by the energy. And then you start to look them spin. They go, you know, to accelerate, going to the foil, uh, 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 then, then uh, um, scatter from the foil in the, in the, different, yeah. in the different direction, depends on the, of the spin. And then you know that this electron was in the system already. But while here, you might induce by the light kind of the, of the, of the, of the spin spin structure, which is also okay, because this is the way to manipulate the system once you are having the, the light and you are inducing by the light polarization 
and with the polarization of light, we induce the spin structure. That's uh -huh. the way. I'm not against that. Okay, but, but the measurements that you are showing in your slide now, they are with linear polarization or with circular? Linear. Linear. Okay, no, that's fine. So it's that. Yeah. that, that that's okay. Okay, thank, I, I don't know, Carol. I, I don't want to monopolize the here. If, may I go on? Yeah, well, I think we have time. There is yeah. Baumer that wants to make a question. Yeah, you can Wendell, go. Wendell, maybe I don't know. <laughs> so I, continue. I, I have a, another very practical question because we, uh, we uh, you can ask Wendell. We struggled a lot to measure a few of these quite insulating materials with ARPs. How do you get rid of the charge? And how do you play with, how, how do you yeah. deal with that? So uh, uh, we do the, I, let, I will explain two ways, right? So the one way is uh, because that system is the, uh, uh, under the light start to be conducting. Yeah. So we measure completely insulator and how we, do, how we do. So we started to actually write by the light conducting part. And, uh, and, then, and then, you know, because of the chemistry which comes here, maybe creation of the vacancies, we are able to go to the center of the sample and stay there. The second way is, I would say, a little bit more engineering and, and needs to have a kind of, of the system. So in the thin films, what we are doing, we are growing them on the conducting substrate. And then you have the huge sink of okay, the so electrons, they, they... which can provide very good con conduction part. The second, and also on the top of that, we are usually also depositing kind of the, of the, of the platinum array uh, over, the, okay. over the surface to also, also avoid the charge. So now, now we combine all of those, let's say two approaches in order to, to get the, 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 the kind of you know, read I out see. of this charging problem. Oh, thank you. And then I have a last one if I, if I can ask, because, I, I, I'm uh, here in our bin line. We we have uh, this photo emission microscope, and I'm, yeah, I see yeah. that you mentioned that you can also visit the photo emission microscope also uh, right. during your. You can do quite a lot of uh, bad resolution ARPs in a pin. Right. Have you done that? Is it, is it useful for something of your research doing this uh, reciprocal? Uh, investigation with a photo emission microscope? Uh, uh, le le I mean, good question, but let's say, unfortunately, uh, or let's say, we don't need. The reason, the reason uh, I was using PIM for something else, some other, other project, okay. nickelates, you know, really just to you know, see phase it. diagrams, uh, no, sorry, uh, phase separation. Phase and separation. Kind of, yeah. Uh, uh, why not here? Because uh, the ARPES is, uh, uh, when you are, me I, will, I want to just, Go the reason why I'm saying that. It's a second. Um, for example, okay, I will go with this slide. So, so if you are, this is our so If you are, uh, you know, measuring the large uh, zone, which means you go in the kx, ky with the large, with the tilting, you know, and so on, then you are able to see a, a couple of the zones. Those are, you know, one, two, three, four, five, almost six. So, from that kind, we, we see all symmetries because the band structure is representing symmetry. Mm -hmm. So once you have the, 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 that, the band structure measuring in the, in the large KX, KY and KZ as well, changing the photon energy, you don't need to have any microscope of the K space anymore because the electronic structure is the representing the K space and, or, or, and, the, and the symmetry or, 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 or ordering or, or K space as well. So here, here you, you, we immediately see something which leads it, right? Yeah. We will see very similar as the lead, just element specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so we immediately see, ah, those are, those are, you know, zone, now we have zone which is four by one. So in this direction, four by one, in this direction, so it's the four by four, right? The zone, so the zone is just like that. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you very much again. Uh, I'll stop the thank harassment you, here you know, now. Very okay. nice questions. <laughs> okay. You can come back maybe later. Okay, Let's thanks. have Valver now. And... Milan, just one question. Thank you very much for your talk. And I was wondering if it's possible to increase in some, let's suppose the STO and the LAO interface. Mm -hmm. it's, if I'm not mistaken, you can have a superconducting phase, right? 
Yes, correct. Is it possible using this interface to increase the tra transition temperature? In any, in any case, I mean, it doesn't have to be the STO LAO. So, uh, uh, I mean, let's see like that, right? So, uh, superconductivity there, which is the which is found, is the with very low TC, is something about three hundred millikelvin. I think that I'm not mistaken. So three hundred millikelvin. In order to increase uh, uh, TC, uh, you can actually you can do with two ways. One to to increase doping, right? Because maybe you are in the phase diagram, you are, you are, you are not on the right, or right doping. So you change the doping, you will increase the TC. But TC is too low uh, uh, already that you say, okay, my changing of the doping will change this drastically. Would change maybe you know another three or four hundred millikelvins, but you still will be below one kelvin. The the the, the, the here. This is kind of the, seems to be conventional type of the superconductivity with very low TC. So you need to actually go to another type of the, of the, of the superconductivity to change the uh, um, glue uh, uh, parameters. So you yes. need to go from, from, from type, which is probably here, which is mediated by phonon, hmm, to the something yeah. else. And can you go like to the nickelates? Like yes, yes, yes. So uh, uh, that's the way. That's the way. I see. That's the way. Beca because you know, then then you are actually squeezing the light. Because here, how much? Maybe maybe let's let's bring. Uh, so, and we need to here change much phonon interactions. Much. So we need to go in the in the something which is drastically different. So how I see that, I, I would say, if we have now STO as the freestanding membrane, uh, and then we start to twist it, that we change uh, lattice parameter much more than that kind of engineering allowed, because this kind of engineering allow us to change the crystal structure in the percents. This is, this is not more, so this is 1%. But if we are able to go over that, you know, to, to to go, you know, really for the factor two, three, five. Maybe we can, you know, open the another type of interaction. Phonon, phonon mode will be changed, and so on. That we will allow TC to be higher. The reason, uh, we right. we know hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen atoms has now TC which is very high. Yeah. But what you need to do, you need to put hundred gigapascals. I don't know how many yeah. gigapascals yeah. there. And so you crystallize the hydrogen. In the, in the lattice under the pressure, or you say you froze them under the pressure, and then you create system which now can have TC much higher. So your overlapping is much higher, your vibration mode now is different, etc. So using this approach, maybe it will work with this, with this transition metal as well. It, it, it also is showing that you can do that. I see, I see. But, but, having, but you know how, how things, are, things are going, right? Once you have the system, which you need to have very strong pressure and set up. This is not something which you can do every day in every lab. So yeah. we need to, to invent something which is much easier to actually mimic that kind of the, of the pressure, or is better to say that kind of the atom's position, which is, uh, uh, which is produced by the huge pressure. I see, I see, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, Wendell? So, uh, uh, it's just a quick, uh, quick question. It's just complementing the Julio, uh, Julio's question about the polarization. So uh, the polarization uh, uh, is related with, with the final states, right? Uh, so my question is in, in the experiment. So how do you choose uh, which is best? So it's the, if it is the circular polarization or linear ah. polarization? Ah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, good, good point, yes. Uh, so let's see, let's see here, right? Maybe I go now. Okay, it doesn't matter. I will, I will, just, I will just go here quickly and then, and then uh, uh, trying to then explain, okay, so. Okay, uh, 
So this is the XY band, and this is YZ band. So just to, those two bands we are looking. So XY band is in the plane. So that means XY band is in the plane. So which means if I use the polarization, which couple with the, with the in-plane orbital, I will enhance signal of that in suppressing the others. So that is what we actually used to choose the polarization. We choose to have the, uh, the, the matching with the, the matrix element actually then right, start to work for us. And, uh, and uh, by circular plus, it will you know, go somewhere uneven. So this is done by the circular, for example, plus, what, what, what C. Because you see, somewhere we have strong intensity, somewhere is low intensity, depend. But once we go in the polarization, uh, 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 very strong, then we have the really even, so that means both branches are with the same intensity and so on. So for X, Y band, which we measure the polarization depend, uh, uh, sorry, spin structure, we use linear horizontal, which is actually basically coupling with our plane. Yeah. It means horizontal in the way of, let's say in plane out of the plane. We use in plane, E vector to be in plane. So uh, for, I mean, the symmetry of the orbitals, for, for instance, uh, for uh, S orbitals, for, for instance, so it's better to use uh, circular or? Yes, I think for S it's better to use circular. Yeah. S is better circular, okay. Yeah. No, it's, a, yeah, that's very nice. Thank you, thank you. Because then you increase intensity factor of, some, yeah. of something, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, for, for everything, what we are, how we do measurement, right? We are first, we do with the circular plus usually just you know to not miss some kind of the of the features there and then when we understand global uh, uh, band structure then we start to play with the polarization to actually understand orbital character of the bands and later when we go to the spin spin measurement then we exclusively do this with the linear polarization vertical or horizontal so it's it's very good if you know the exactly direction uh, of alignment yeah. of your samples, right? So you, you yeah, need yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's usually for us is the, because we have very powerful uh, um, manipulators. So uh, yeah. the, first of all, they are very high with very high stability and precision. So they are you know on the one micron precision, and uh, and they are uh, going in the in the actually ba basically five uh, degrees of the freedom. So that is X Y Z. Okay, it's fine. But then we can yeah. do something which called tilt, right? And then we are able then yeah. to, you know, go in the zone in this direction. Yeah. And then we could do theta, which we then are able to access the zone in the K. If, if this is KY, the other is KX. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you again. Welcome, welcome. Are there other questions, comments? No, Julio, do you have other questions? No, <laughs> that's that's fine. Okay. Thank, I'm fine. So, Thank you. No, because you are doing so many questions. Maybe there was one more, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, so thanks a lot, Milan. It was a nice, nice seminar and nice discussion. I'm yeah. glad if you like. Yes, it was yeah, we'll... step by step, so I think it was easier to follow. Yeah, we will try to bring Milan to Brazil maybe in the couple of the next years, right? Yeah. I would like, I would love really. Yeah, it, it's a good idea, yes. Okay. Let's hope the situation will get better. And then hopefully yes. we have still the, the, the program from CAPS, uh, CAPS Spring. Yeah, we will find a way. Maybe we will it's find possible to, to invite yeah. him to come here we and uh, we can get in touch with people in Campinas and... Uh, Right. Yeah, yeah, Secreton, I would yeah. love really to, to visit. That's, uh, that's by sure. And also, guys, I mean, whenever you can come, when, when situation will be a little bit easier, even, you know, with Balder now. Balder will be in, 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 uh, in France, and because of the kind of administration restriction, he cannot come to, be, to, to the Switzerland, even it's just, you know, a couple of hours of, of the train. It's yeah. the pity. Yeah, but okay, it is yeah. what it is. Let's, let's follow rules. And, uh, and and hoping for for next year to be everything good yeah yeah it's going to get better yeah it's going to get yeah. better yeah <laughs> i think okay. it's already better now right yeah. so hopefully yeah. it won't get worse or as worse as before so <laughs> okay yeah, <laughs> thanks right. a lot thank you milan thank you carol thank you, thank thank you all guys thank you. and uh, uh,
keep safe and and yeah you too sure. see you, you sure. in person soon i hope bye 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 bye, bye. Ciao. bye. thank you very much thank you